All right, we are recording now. What's up, everybody? My name is Juwan Rohan, and this is the Misguided Podcast. We're intending to guide you to a better future. I'm sitting here with Derek Alford, entrepreneur and business coach. Good morning, my brother. Hey, brother, how you doing, man? You know, I'm living, I'm living. Um, it's beautiful outside already. It's supposed to be like 80s and 90s um, this weekend. It's Memorial Day weekend, so... Um, it's looking like a good weekend, even though I work, but <laughs> it's a busy weekend. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's all good, man. I know you're in beautiful Cali too, so it's got to be perfect over there. Yeah, beautiful Cali and busy Cali right now. The real estate market is is just like nonstop. I'm a realtor, so uh, just meeting with clients. I got like like seven houses to show today and then tomorrow, like nine houses, so a lot of driving, man. A lot of driving. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's good though, man. The commission's gonna come in good though. Yeah. The real estate there is crazy. Yeah, so I already know. The real estate here is just kind of wild right now. But uh, yeah, uh, I appreciate you coming up here, man. Uh, it's been a while. Um, how I first found you was going through Andre Hatchet, um, his notary course, and you were you were dropping some gems on there and, and giving some lessons um and so i appreciate that um obviously i've interviewed him a couple months ago uh, that was a really good episode i still talk about to this day um so uh yeah i just appreciate you coming on uh, on here you do a lot of things and we'll dive into everything today but let's go ahead and start from where are you from derek um from rochester new york and also shout out to the big brother andre you know, you're always uh putting me on from the beginning Appreciate him, but yeah, Rochester, New York. Uh, we're near Buffalo. A lot of people don't know where Rochester, New York is. They'd be like, "Where is that in New York City?" I'm like, "Nah, it's near Buffalo, Syracuse." Yeah. Our yeah. city. That's where I'm from. So, yeah. For sure, you still live out there? Yes. Are you? Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I still live here. I'm trying to uh, move down south. So the plan is get a few more properties, and me and my my, my partner who will be my wife if I'm lucky. We'll move to Atlanta or uh, so yeah, Georgia, it's Georgia Atlanta area. We're gonna get out the snow, man. It ain't fun yeah. shoveling. You wouldn't know nothing about that in Cali, man, but yeah. man, the snow here is crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. I got it out of here. Now I lived in uh, Colorado for uh for college for four years. And so like, yeah, snow is snow is pretty crazy. And imagine waking up at like 6 a.m. to go to practice trying to warm up and you got to go through the snow to get to the gym like that shit is the worst um <laughs> doesn't put you in a good mood Crazy. but yeah i know where rochester is you, you definitely got a, a buffalo accent i could kind of i could i could see it. it's like it's, it's like peeking through <laughs> i never heard that i mean i don't even know what that sounds like man oh really <laughs> i don't even know what that sounds like but that's cool people say i sound like i'm from new york or whatever so i'm like all right yeah so Cool, cool. Um, now Atlanta's man. I I'm hearing great things about Atlanta. I actually have a, a call scheduled with a realtor uh, next week because I'm trying to invest out there. Um, and okay. and uh, yeah, I heard I heard. I mean, there's so much obviously you can do. Obviously, Atlanta never shut down during the pandemic. In fact, they actually got more busier. So <laughs> it's a popping city. You have everything from strip clubs to real real life stuff like there's just so much to do out there entertainment wise um workforce wise everything so that's cool man that would be cool what's your uh what's your plan like three to five years to move out there or quicker of course it would, i wanted to be quicker but uh you know probably three to five years um got a few properties uh, i want to get a few more my queen got a few properties so we're just trying to keep it moving but it's kind of crazy real estate's crazy everywhere so right now it's it's kind of challenging to get properties as a realtor. I'm sure you even, I'm sure you know, like just even trying to get an offer in is, is just, it's just crazy where I'm at. Like, yeah, I was going 20 and 30 over. So it's just hard right now. Hey, bro. Hey, that's nothing. <laughs> I'm in California. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 20, 20 to 30 somewhere <laughs> else is like 200 to 300 here. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I can't, I, can't, I guess I can't complain. Yeah. I, guess I can't complain. <laughs> I, I'm seeing stuff yeah. right now that's that's listed for like nine 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 and going for like one point three. I'm seeing stuff that's listed for like one point two right. here going for like one point six. Ridiculous, right? And it's like shit it's built crazy. in nineteen fifties 
And like, what? Like, you got me messed up. I, you know how many pop properties I could buy with that extra two to 300K? Like, but um, yeah, that's crazy, man. But uh, I, I'm telling everyone um, this, but uh, June 30th is when the COVID protection law goes away. Um, and so landlords will be able to evict their tenants um, for rent not paid, you know, all through 2020 um, up until June 30th of this year. Um, landlords cannot evict because of that COVID protection law. That goes away. And then um, tenants are required to pay 25% of, uh, you know, their back pay um, by September. So going into the fall and winter, man, a lot more properties on the market. So just be be ready. All right. I hope so. I hope they keep pushing that back, though. So I don't know that yeah. that sticks because that's yeah. been changing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so. yep, just keep an eye on, out, out on it. Um, cool. I want to go ahead and get into how, so growing up in Rochester, um, New York or yeah, Rochester, uh, how was, how was your childhood, man? Um, you know, I guess like most young dudes, um, the mom dudes, uh, my father wasn't around, um, it's a lot of interesting story about him cause he's in the real estate, but my mom took care of me, um, went to the city schools. Um, you know, mom was tough on me, you know, taught, taught me to be responsible. Um, I got started working at 14. So, you know, learn how to save money. I was pretty good at saving. So, you know, just, I was the only child too. So grew up by myself with my mom. Yeah. Yeah, just. Nice. What really struggled too much, but you know. You mind if I ask about your, your pops a little bit? You said he's in the real estate and, and obviously you're in the real estate. Um, but you said he wasn't around much. Am I going a little bit more? Yeah, it's a funny story. Yeah. Um, he, uh, you know, my parents, I guess they met when they were in college. So my mom had me, they met in Detroit. No, actually my father used to live here and they went to school, they moved to Detroit and then I was conceived. And then my mom came back here and they, you know, they went their separate ways, but, you know, my mom always told me a little bit about him. He was always a business guy um, in the real estate. And it's just funny. I never really knew him, but I ended up following the same path as him. We ended up, he used to work at General Motors. I ended up working there. He ended up getting the real estate. I ended up getting the real estate. Like, <laughs> and we never even met him. Like, I don't even know him like that. Yeah. Like, we talked past year through COVID. We actually been connected with him, but it's just funny how... You don't even know I'm him. Following man. his path, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that is crazy, man. Um, well, damn, yeah, that is crazy, man. I, I, I like. I wouldn't say I followed my 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 father's foot footprints. I mean, he wasn't really around um after after high school, but um, it's just it's just cool, you know. Like sometimes I do. I'm like, damn, like I just had like a I acted like my dad moment. If if you know what I mean, it's like sometimes you have yeah. that. You're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah um so i know what you mean man i know what you mean but uh, if you hear from moms moms will tell you too like yeah you, you know your father did that you, yeah, yeah just like your father i'll be like yeah yes okay. yeah yeah um so your mom your mom's lives in uh in rochester or, or detroit oh she's she's here um uh, my father he's i got family in gary indiana so i got a whole bunch of people over there so after college my father got his engineering degree he has an MBA. He's a real, you know, he's a real corporate guy. He's, oh yeah. So this dude's like a smart corporate. guy. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 He's real smart. He bought his business and then he quit his job. And he in real estate full time. Dude got like hundred and something properties or what? He, he got so much real estate. He's a millionaire. Like he's a real millionaire. Like it's crazy. I, I, I wish my dad dude. was that smart. My dad just a bum and, and don't <laughs> like me. <laughs> That's cool though. Um, well, damn. Are you going you gonna to try and beat him over 100 properties? Nah, I mean, I just want enough to be able to take care of my family and, you know, pass it on to my kids. I mean, of course, I want as much as I can get, but it's not a competition. Not, yeah. Um. So, yeah, but I mean, if sure. it happens, it happens. I mean. It'll, it'll happen because, trying. you know, the more you get, like, damn. You know, I could just get more. Like, I might as well. Like, you know, it's that, that yeah. it's not even the greed. It's just like, uh, let's see how much I could get. Addiction. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm addicted. I, I got two. I'm trying to get some more, but yeah. Hey, man, one, get it. Like, oh, this, this, this. 
Yeah, I was gonna say getting two is is a blessing, man. I'm trying to get one right now because I was supposed to get one in uh September, and then lost my job, my corporate job, and then that set everything back. And then so now, right now, I'm in the process of trying to get one. Uh, but but it's always about taking that first step. So um, let's go ahead and talk about that. Actually, how did you acquire your first property? Oh man, my my queen, she got me into real estate because I was working at GM and. It's so funny because my mom owned the house, my aunts, my grandmother owned the house. I knew I was going to own a house at some point, but I was renting. I'm just like, it's a lot of work. I didn't. I felt like it was going to be a lot of work being a homeowner. Then I met her yep. and some people at the job, and they like, you know, you can live for free. I'm like, live for free? Like, I like that. How you live for free? And like, you know, she told me about the duplex and stuff, and I'm like, all right, so you get two houses and you live on one side or the other side out. Yeah. She told me the plan. You know, she told me what she was going to do. I was already kind of like struggling, you know, you're making good money, but had a lot of bills and, you know, rent is a big expense. So if you can cut that out, I mean, that's like rent and cars, rent and cars. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So saved up my money. Um, GM was a good job despite it's factory work. So you doing this, like you set assembly line work. I don't recommend it for anybody, but it's a good stepping stone. And, um, we were getting bonuses and I just saved up my profit share and uh, my money and I, my woman find my house. My queen find my house. And yeah, the rest is history. Like, I'm how, how much did you end up sa saving up? Uh, I saved up like, like fifteen, fifteen thousand. How, how, how needed, long did it take you? Oh, it took me like two years, and it was. I've been look. We were looking for a long time because you want to find the right house, but it, you know, there's no perfect house. But you know, I wanted to at least be able to stay there for like three to five years and be okay, and not have to like. I need to get out of here. Like I need to be okay with my living situation. And with certain loans, you have to stay in the house for a certain amount of time anyways, like whether it's a year, three years. So, you know, I wanted to be okay. So I saved up for um, like two years and I was looking for two years at the same time. And I saved up 15, um, got, it, got into this program. I had to put 3.5% down. FHA? Um, kind of, it wasn't really, it was similar to FHA, but it was first time home buyers program. Oh, and, oh they let yeah. you put 3.5. That's good, man. My, uh, my homie did it last year and he had to put 5% down during the pandemic. Well, you, you know, I'm lie. sorry. It might've, it might've been 5%. Oh, it might've okay. been five. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry no, you're good. Might've been five. It's been a minute. I think it was 5%. When did, uh, sorry, when, was, what year was it that you bought your first? Oh, this was, uh, 18. Oh, okay. It was 18. 2018, I bought it. And I was in the summertime, and I didn't know what I was doing, brother. Like, yeah. I, it's, I had tenants and stuff. One had to leave because I had to move in. I had this one tenant. She was, you know, kind of ratchet, you know. It was a duplex? Yeah, it was a duplex. Yeah, uh, it was a duplex. Yeah, that's nice. So I had to, yeah, <laughs> so I didn't know what I was doing, brother. I learned a lot. Yeah. I learned yeah. a lot. But see, that's the thing is like, as much as you can spend online training, taking courses, reading, uh, you won't get that experience until you're actually in it. You know what I mean? Um, you could have spent all the time in the world, you know, procrastinating, reading books on how to buy your first property, taking courses, how to buy your first property, how to get cash flow. But you probably wouldn't have been ready for a ratchet tenant, right? You, you probably wouldn't have yeah. been ready how to evict a tenant properly or how to maybe pay them in cash to get them out of your property, right? Those are things you kind of just have yep. to learn on the fly um, and how to deal with that. I mean, because human interaction, you can't just read a book on it and think you're an expert. It's really human interaction. The only way to experience it is experience. Um, That's true. So yeah, no, nah, that's amazing, man. Congrats on that property. Um, let's go ahead and talk about your next one. Um, How did you acquire your next one and when was it? Um, I actually got the next one um, when did I closed in January of this year. It took so long. It was like a city auction. And okay. um, I basically saw it and I was like, I wasn't really, I, I liked it, but I never did a city, like an auction with people bidding and stuff on it. On it. So, you know, I put my best bid in and I got it. So it's a single family. Um, I'm actually working on that right now should be done in the next hopefully month or two and I did all the electrical in there um I do 
do some plumbing stuff. And that's kind of what I said. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. So the first house was kind of like phase was like level one. Like it was pretty much ready to go. It just needed some paint, a little bit of updates and, you know, some minor plumbing. So I learned how to do all that. But this house needs needed new flooring and needed a whole new bathroom pretty much. Um, had to do all new, like electrical and needs a new furnace. Like, so it's kind of like levels, like, all right, the first one was a little easier. The second one, I have no idea what I'm doing now. Yeah. So now I got to learn a whole bunch of different stuff. So it's kind of like, you know, you learn as you go and the more you know, the easier it'll get. What, um, get so for property. the listeners, for the listeners, where are you getting this refinance money from? Because you said you say 15,000, but did that include the paint and all that? What about this house? How much uh, was your down payment and where are you getting the, the loans to, to renovate from? Oh, so the first house, I, I could say was a loan. The second house, I saved up a bunch of money, you know, working at GM. So I bought this one cash. Okay. I bought this one cash, fixed it up. Spent about 30. I spent like 30 to get it. But like I said, I was working a pretty good job and able to save a good amount of money. And, you know, living for free, you know, I didn't have to pay rent. So, you know, you save the money that you would have been paying for rent. Yeah. Put that back in your pocket, get that ready for the next one. I paid my car off. So... All the money that I would have been spending, I always try to save that. So yeah, just trying to save as much money as I could. So save that, put into this one. So I think it might need like maybe seven grand of work, and I'm gonna run it for like fourteen hundred dollars a month. Seven grand and of work? Straight. That's easy. That's nothing. Yeah, I mean it's not yeah. bad. It's, it's not bad it's for electrical right and, just... and all that stuff. That's pretty good. Yeah, lumber right now is crazy and. All, all yeah. that stuff is crazy, but um, yeah, just finding contractors is hard right now because everybody's so busy, bro. They're busy. Everybody's so yeah. busy. I had a contractor coming the other day to look at a uh, inspection on it. Something had just, I had a client who had just bought a house, and the inspector came in and he was like, Yeah, all right, cool. I got all this. I probably won't be able to come in until September. I was like, Oh, shit. Like, y'all busy. <laughs> Um, crazy out here man yeah most definitely well that's, that's cool. another that's another thing yeah go ahead brother no no i was gonna say that's cool two two properties um and, and and you're a homeowner um as a black man man that that is that is something to be proud of you know um and so i congratulate you um i want to talk about you i mean we're going to talk about a lot but i want to talk about you being an author as well um so um, you wrote the book. Let me let me not butcher the name. Choose wisely: the Black Man's Guide to Healthy Relationships. You are the first person to write a book that I know about uh, relationships, um, especially for Black men. So, and you know, you always see these movies, right? these movies by maybe like Tyler Perry or something, where there's a black man and he's a you know uh he's fucking up and then another black man comes in and saves the whole marriage and it's just like <laughs> you know what i mean those little so soap yeah, opera yeah, yeah. movies so yeah. um <laughs> can you can you kind of expound <laughs> on your book and, and and congratulations on that oh yeah thank you yeah i wrote the book while i was working at gm and i just wrote it because i was going through a lot of things i learned a lot you know growing up without my father you know dating and stuff like that and i just wanted a book that could help young men and older men as well, because we all need guidance. Other, you know, age doesn't really matter at some point. So I just wanted to write a book to kind of help, you know, men and boys kind of figure out how to find the right partner and also how to maintain a good relationship when you find it. Because it's, you know, it's hard to find somebody good. So when you find somebody good, you got to make sure you hold on to them. But you might not even know if you got somebody good or how to find somebody good. So I really wanted to write a book that kind of just help. Kind of give some guidance on that and it just shows like some of the things to look for in a woman and a partner you know I, I talked about stuff that i learned mistakes that i made because um you know i have a son but i don't have a son with the woman i'm with i had a son with someone that i shouldn't have been dealing with and i learned a lot of hard lessons that way and yeah that's why i'm not having any more kids like get married because i don't want to go through that and i don't want you know i don't want any other men to go through the child support and the kids in separate homes i mean I'm sure a lot of kids that might listen to this might be in that circumstance. And, you know, a lot of men, we, we probably grew up in similar circumstances, like our dad wasn't there. So I just wanted to try to help fix that, do my part. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. 
No, nah, that, that's that's super dope, man. Um, and and it's well needed, you know, in, in in the world. Like it's not talked enough. It's not talked about enough. Um, so the fact that that you can sit here and write a book and kind of just have it out there for for people to find is super super interesting. Um, and that's how was that process writing the book, man? I just finished my first book and released it and everything, and um, it's a long process. So how was that for you? Um, it was definitely had its challenge trying to format it and just trying to figure out like, how do I, yeah, I did a lot of overthinking and, you know, my queen helped me and Andre helped me too, to kind of format it. And I just kind of, whenever I had a break at work, I would just come up with a chapter and I would just write as much as I could about that chapter or whatever that idea was focused on. And then this is all a notebook. And then once I got all the chapters that I felt would fill the book or that I felt I needed to get out there. I typed it all up and sent it to my editor. And yeah, it, it was an interesting process. I needed to write another book, but I was glad to have something out there that will live forever. So yeah, most definitely, most definitely. There. In your name lives forever. And it's about a great topic. Um, yeah, nah, man. Uh, I'm sure Andre Happy, Hatchet uh, gave you some great, great advice. Uh, actually, who helped me a lot was Tiger Toledo <laughs> writing my book. Okay. So. Shout out Tiger. Um, too. He he helped a lot, man. He gave me a lot of wisdom on on setting a pre order and kind of structuring the business or the yeah the business of the book. Um, but yeah, man. Um, congratulations on that. I also wanted to um, talk about uh, you being a life coach. Um, so how did that like even come into play? Like you you're just doing so many things, man. You're all over the place. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I guess just kind of growing up as an only child, I kind of learned a lot, um, kind of watched people. So I was kind of the guy in my group of friends and the crew, or they would ask me for advice. So I was kind of like, I'm kind of like maybe the, the in-between, like not the oldest, not the youngest, but people were, would run stuff by me. And even that, when I worked at the factory, I had noticed that people would kind of ask me about certain things. And I'm just like, why people asking me? Like, they know I'm like, 28 like yeah. <laughs> why are you asking me and I, uh, you know people tell me like you know you're pretty wise for your age and you know a lot of stuff and I kind of realize that you know that's true I need to help people I, I guess I am a coach so it's just something I want to do I like helping people and it's kind of comes natural to me to give information and give them my, my honest opinion that I think will be you know, best for whatever they asking me about whatever the circumstances business relationships yeah working on getting more out there i've been so busy with the properties that i haven't really been able to focus on it as much but i do get you know consultations and stuff and well stuff hey like so time to hire a va in. time to hire a va man on fiverr i'm telling you it's it's, yes. it's the best decision ever I, I i didn't i didn't hire a va but i hired a, a social media manager um and and it was the, definitely the best decision ever so it saves me a shit ton of time um but yeah, yeah we gotta get some I'm get you uh, some contact from you, brother. <laughs> Yo, man. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, most definitely. Um, cool. Um, so life coach. So like, do you? So what kind of clientele um, are you looking for mostly? Like, what if someone in the audience is is trying to reach out to you but not <laughs> sure? Um, kind of what you coach on. Um, I'm really looking for you know. Anybody that really is looking to get some help, whether it's with their relationship, so I don't really have an age group. Um, probably, I would say maybe 20s, you know, 20, yep. early 20s. I feel like that would be the best audience for me to kind of help. Um, just because that's like a crucial point. That's kind of like where you kind of, I feel like you're setting a good foundation for, you know, the next level, like your 30s and stuff like that. That's kind of where you could really, like you, if you can avoid making a bunch of mistakes while you're in that group, I think, you know, you should be good. So I want to really try to catch people at that point before, you know, they get caught up in that stuff or, or just before they, it's, it's, it's just a pivotal point. I want to catch it before you get too, too lost if I can, yeah. but I want to yeah. help people around there. So. For sure, for sure. 
No, that's a great that's a great thing because like in your twenties, right? You're you're fresh out of college. Um, if you if you chose to go to college, or and your your brain is just kind of developing uh, rapidly. Um, at that point, um, and and you're really you're just forced into like this world where you're supposed to just pick so many things, right? You're supposed to go get a car, or you're you're supposed to go get a job, right? You got a job now, okay? Now you got income, yeah. okay? Now you're supposed to go get a car. Now you're supposed to go find a place to rent in the city and save yeah, up and yeah. and you're you're like society forces like so much pressure on us um around that age telling us what we should do and a lot of it's the wrong wrong choices so um i think having a coach yeah, or just some mentorship um and some guidance um is perfect for that age so for sure for sure man um well, cool. I want to move on to the segment called uh, the misguided, the hella misguided segment, um, where I ask the same question to each of my uh, my guests. Um, the question for you is, um, if you were to write a, a story, um, a letter to yourself at 18 years old, what would be a summary of that letter? I was going to write a letter to 18 me. Yeah. Um, probably... Uh, like, are you? Hold on, you're, you're, you're freezing, Derek. Uh oh. I'm thinking, I think I'm losing you. All right, guys, we are back. Um, sorry for the technical difficulties, but I hope you enjoyed the ad. Um, so let's just continue where we left off. The question for the Hella Misguided segment is if you were to write yourself a letter um, to your 18 year old self, what would you say? Uh, a letter to my 18 year old self. Oh man. So I would basically tell my 18 year old self, stop dealing with that. Uh, the, the woman or the girl that I was dealing with, run away right now. <laughs> like, run away. There's going to be so many problems and headaches in the future. So run away and take some time to figure out who you are, what you want, what do you want to do. Because at that point in time, I was just like most kids, I was trying to do the college thing. I didn't really know what I wanted to do in school, but I at least knew that if I was going to go to school, I didn't want to get into a bunch of debt. So I went to a community college and just took some like regular classes. But I would just tell myself just to run away from the girl and um, run away and fi figure out who I am. Take some time. Yeah. Yeah. Now that makes sense, man. A lot of us fall into like, especially at a young age, kind of just like, the looks and like this dream of you know trying to fix a person right um and, and we get caught up and like well she was here for me then it's always like trying to make an excuse right or uh i, I was at a wedding yesterday and, and the and the pastor said some some interesting uh stuff like we always we always try to find the uh to the way to change them well they'll they'll eventually do this or you know uh this is just a phase or like you know what i mean um and obviously some stuff like especially in relationships you have to like you don't have to but um you're gonna go through ups and downs and, and some stuff it's possible to get through if that makes sense you know what i mean like um an unconditional love obviously it 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 surpasses the ups and downs in a relationship. Um, but when you're 18, you know what I mean? You, you're not really sure how to handle that um, as much as you probably probably would now. You know what I mean? So. Right. And I'm 30 now, so it's been uh, some growth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Facts. Facts, facts. Well, that's cool, man. That's, that's good. Uh, no one's really touched on like relationships when I asked that question. So I appreciate that. Thank you for being open. Key to everything. I mean, your relationships, that's, you know, that's kind of what helps form who you are and the people around you form who you are. So I, always, I learned as I got older to be more careful about who you have around you. Your circle, they influence you the most. They're around you the most. You look at them, they look at you. Energy is real. So I'm always trying to keep good people around you. Yeah. Careful with who you keep around you. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Well, yeah, no, you're 100% right. Um, cool. I want to go ahead and talk about kind of, I mean, how I was first introduced to you was through the notary stuff. Um, how did that come into play? And like, 
where the hell did you find time to sit down and start teaching kids and adults about uh, notary? Uh, well, what got me into it was uh, being that, that job. I hated that job, bro. Like, I hated that job. Like, I never really had a job that I hated until I had that job. And that job, you made so much money. People were like, you going to Are you still it? there? Nah, I quit that job. Oh, bro. okay. I do my, okay. Thing, I do my <laughs> own thing. Yeah, yeah. I do my own thing. I do the notary, electrical properties. <laughs> it's crazy. But, um... Yeah, I was I was there trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So I found out about Boyce Watkins and then I found out about Andre. So I took notary business school, started the business with my queen. Me and her both went in together on that. And next thing you know, you know, Andre started reaching out to me like, hey, you want to teach a class? You want to help me out? I'm like, all right, you know. I looked up to him. He was a mentor for me. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know. So started teaching a class. And then the next thing you know, you teach another class, teach another class. Yeah. So... I've been rocking with him ever since. I teach when I when he needs me. That's dope. Yeah, so that's cool. super dope. What um? So okay, so you 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 mentioned a couple of times that you do electrical. So like, doesn't that like require schooling? So like, where did where did you find time to do schooling, or did you do YouTube University? <laughs> um, a little bit of both. But I, uh, there's a high school here called Edison Tech, and a uh, vocational high school. So at that high school, you can do carpentry, electrical, um. Carbon, uh, masonry, you could do cars. We had, it was four schools. It was like probably the most innovative school we have here where you can learn hands-on stuff. Or if you want to do computers, they had an IIT class where you learn how to code, build websites. They had a business part or you can learn business, um, engineering school. But I was in applied tech, which was a vocational. So I got into electrical. I was good at it. So at 11th grade, I was leaving my shop class to go work. Like I was making money in 11th grade. So I was doing electrical work, working for a company called Radek, which is an electrical company here. So I was in 11th grade, I'm leaving and people still in school until one, I'm uh, three, I'm leaving at one. I go work from like one to four. I learned how to do some electrical stuff and I was making money, so. So why the hell did you go to General Motors and then not just continue the electrical stuff knowing that it's good money? That's the thing, I was young. <laughs> Cool to get dirty and stuff, man. I wanted to be, you know, cool, man. I had my jewelry, my fronts, man. I, yeah. I, you know, I look back at it. I kind of wish I did, but at the same time, I didn't because it's um, electrical work is cool, but there's sometimes layoff. So I got laid off a lot being in the field, and I didn't like that. So don't you have the union protection though? Well, I was still in school, so I wasn't oh, like a um, true, true, true time employee. And to get into that, you had to join the union. And I thought about joining the union, but it's cold here, brother. I'm not working in the snow, man. I don't <laughs> want to work on the side. Like, I was telling my girl this the other day, like, if I was, we was down south, I would have still been in electrical. Yeah. Because I could work out in the heat, but I can't do the cold, man. Yeah, yeah. That's that funny, because you're from, you're from Rochester. Like, it's been cold your whole life, and you still don't like it. <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, some things you don't get used to, but I'm a black man. Like, we don't, you know, I need the sun for my yeah. mother, man. I, that's yeah. not good for me to be in the cold, man. So, come to come to Cali, man. Come to Cali. <clears throat> I, I want to. I'm going to go there. I, I want to come to San Diego one day. So, gotta that's, my, there. that's my favorite place, San Diego. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I wish I'd have stuck with it, but it worked out because I met a guy. And he um he got properties and he kind of pulled me into it with him like yo you want to do some electrical work on the side I can use your help I'm like all right so I, I met a dude on Facebook um he needed some electrical work done so I started working with him so on the weekends I'm learning stuff that I would have learned in the union but I'm learning it through him mm -hmm. and we talk property that's dope so it's just it's just how God works out things for you like I'm getting union training without going yeah. to the union he yeah. did that already. So. that's super dope man congrats on that dude you do everything man you're all you're all around and i love it i love it because that's this is exactly how i am uh sometimes i have to try and not spread myself out too thin um yeah but, the hard part i struggle with that yeah right so, same <laughs> um so the notary man so how's that been going for you so i um i mean i just got my my stuff right here so i gotta go down and file my this is my bond. I got to go down tomorrow and file my my bond. Um, so how's that been going for you? 
Oh yeah, notary's cool. Um, I started doing fingerprinting. That's where me and my lady we made our mark in the fingerprinting. But um, notary's still good. I make uh, I still get some jobs. I'm just so busy doing electrical and fixing up my property that a lot of these jobs. I met this girl on Instagram. She uh, knew about Andre School. She's in Rochester, so a lot of times I just give her my jobs. Whether I'm so busy doing other stuff, but I still get calls like every day. You do you do this? Uh, loan closings and I, I don't have time, but yeah. it's, it's always good for me. Like whenever I want it, I can get it. But yeah, that's that's when like I mean obviously you know about the courses, but that's what like Malik and and Tiger Toledo they they're not just notaries. They you know they created an agency where they just you know pass off the the business to other people and then they just take a little bit off the cut off the top and and um but that way they're they're more free to do you know what they what they want to do right um whether it's tiger writing his little uh fiction books or malik trying to get into real estate right now um but uh yeah i mean like i man dude i just i just been realizing like how lucrative it actually is like i mean we haven't done a notary episode in a while um but that's like a lot of people keep talking about the notary episodes that i've done um and just how lucrative and how it, you, it doesn't cost a lot to start up the business um but i mean i've been going on ride-alongs with tech um and so i've been really like he's been he's been like kind of mentoring me on the game a little bit and and just seeing the client the clientele that we're going to um and seeing how profitable it is like i believe like last week i i was a witness for 50 dollars for a 17 minute transaction 17 minutes 50 dollars <laughs> what's, what's the numbers like in Cali for that man like what, what can y'all charge or like what's the numbers out there so the max for a, like an actual stamp, right? The notary um, is $15 is the max. But okay. obviously you could charge for the mileage, the, you know, all the other good stuff um, you can charge for. Um, I believe we did a, a will notary. It was a will. Um, I think it was about three stamps, maybe three stamps. Um, and I think the total was about like 195. If I, if I remember for 17 oh, minutes. Crazy, yeah. And then, and then I was like, all right, well, I got to go meet with these clients. <laughs> like, like, it, it's just like, you know, it's like, that was his only one for the day. And, and he, he's good. You don't, you don't have to work another job. Like you're, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah. it's, it's it, the notary is super lucrative. And I, 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 um, I encourage anyone listening to this podcast to do a little bit of research, take Andre's class. Um, it was super helpful. Um, and just learn about it. Even if like, it's something good to know because it, it's pandemic proof, you know, what you guys talk about a lot in the course, it's pandemic proof. They, it, they needed you guys more than anything in the pandemic. <laughs> so our business, one of our businesses was closed and we were still getting calls. Like, yeah. cause we, we we it was shut down here like you you, they, you know they, no social distancing you can't you know do fingerprinting and certain things right now so we were closed people still calling us it's yeah. crazy man. it's crazy. It's crazy yeah yeah well man so you do it all man we got author investor life coach um fuck man everywhere stocks what stocks are you in man um, I use Acorn, so I'm pretty like diversified there. So they they invest for me. Yeah. Are you uh? What's your what's your profile set to? Monetarily? Wait. Uh, it, it's like. I think I'm high risk. I think I'm high risk because I'm still. I think it's high risk to like you're thirty something. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm I'm up there. Just, so there's like the highest risk, and then I'm the one that's below the highest risk. So like. Yeah. The pretty aggressive too. one. Yeah. 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 Aggressive. Yeah. I'm aggressive. Yeah. Yep. Uh, cool. So, cool. Like yeah. That. Uh, but I tell stocks. I tell people like I use Robinhood. I buy stuff that I like. Like I, I'm a Nissan guy. I love cars, so I'm gonna buy a Nissan stock. Like anything that I own and I like, or if I'm going to Walmart, I need to own some of that. I need there to you own go. Some, I got a Dell computer. I need to own Dell. I like buying Delta. I need Delta stock. So I just tell people buy. You buy what you, you wear. Need. Yeah. Yeah. Like what you what they're making money off you because you buying it. So you might as well own some of it. So yeah, that's my thing about it. That's cool, man. That's great advice. And that's easy advice. 
It's easy. You're buying it. It's obviously selling. It's something that's trendy. It's something that's going up, right? You wouldn't be buying it if it's on its way down. It's simple. Yeah, um, you feel better buying it because you own something. Like, oh, I'm going to share all this. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. facts. That's facts. Um, I did want to see it. I did want to shout out a couple of stocks uh, um, recently because the stock market has been crazy. But uh, uh, one to get into right now is Apple. I mean, obviously, um, Apple is just so it's probably the strongest stock um, out there. But obviously, they're constantly releasing new stuff. They just came out with the iPad. They just came out with the purple color phone. I think they're coming out with like a pink one uh, this month or something. And they just keep dropping stuff. Um, I got a whole like whiteboard over here. Um, but, um, another one that I've been doing a lot of research on is, oh, um, it's a real estate, um, it's a real estate, uh, real estate stock and, uh, they pay really high dividends. They're like the best dividend stock. Um, but the, the ticker is, oh, so anyone out there and it's like $60, I want to say, um, anyone out there, make sure you check out those two stocks right now. Um, and then as far as crypto, man, are you into crypto or no? Oh, yeah, man. I, I'm in, I try to be in a li- into a little bit of everything. So, yeah, I got some crypto. Um, I've been in that since at least two or three years. I saw Ethereum and it was cheap, man. I wish I had bought more of it. Me like, too. I was. I saw it when it was like $100, $139. Yeah. And I, I just looked at it like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, that's high. Yeah. I was like, damn, that's high. Like, what happened to like ten dollars? <laughs> but hey, hey, your Ethereum just dropped last week to like seventeen hundred. I bought, I bought some more at seventeen hundred. Yeah, I also tell people to look at the um the coins that you know come off, like you know, like Ethereum turn into Ethereum Classic. It's like they break in and like um yeah. They call it. um yeah. I forgot like when the coins they kind of like um merge into another coin or they break off and it's yeah, different. Yeah, yeah so I was different. like people keep on those. Like cause if the if the main coin is doing good, then you know people eventually gonna buy the, you know, the 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 smaller version of it or the chain that broke off it. Wish I remember what they call that, but uh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't tell people get into one base, get some crypto too. That's good, so, good advice. Cool, cool. Well, Derek, man, I appreciate you coming up here. Um, We're going to wrap up pretty soon. Um, The way I like to end the episode is with a segment called Guided Conclusions, where I ask you a funny, serious, whatever kind of question, but we haven't talked about it previously to this episode. Um, Today, my question is, what's a conspiracy that you kind of believe? It can be from any anywhere from, you know, the Illuminati, right? Or the Twin Towers was from America. Like, What's a conspiracy? You oh man, I don't want to scare people because I kind of be into some of that stuff, man. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I don't know right now, and I don't want to scare nobody because I it's very current. Is I saw that you know with this with the shot that they want you to get that it's a little chip in there, and they trying to chip people. Uh-huh. So I don't know, man. I think there might be some truth to that. I saw. On uh, Instagram, this lady had a piece of metal stuck to her, a magnet stuck to her arm where she got the shot at. And I don't understand if it's just a shot. Why is a, a magnet sticking to your arm unless there was something of metal inside your arm? And that's not to scare anybody that got the shot. And I don't know if you got one, brother, or not. But, you know, either way, I just, I don't, I don't know. So that's yeah. my conspiracy thing. Like, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I feel it. I feel it. Um, I mean, obviously, there's been a lot of stuff. Even like uh, a couple months ago, they had they like did it on national television where they had nurses kind of fake giving shots, which I kind of understand, right? Because what if they already had the shot? You're not just gonna keep giving them shots on national television. You're just gonna show how to give the shot. But a lot of people on TikTok was like, "Oh, they're lying. They're not giving the shots on and on TV." Blah blah blah. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's so many sides of the story. And obviously I just don't t- trust the government, but, um, and, 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 and no one does, but then you never really know. Like, you know, the, one of the main arguments right now is 
for people not taking a shot is um besides the chip thing it's 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 more of how come we haven't found uh, a way to cure cancer how come we haven't found a way to cure aids but in less than a year we found a way to cure coronavirus right um, obviously two two different extremes the coronavirus is more related to like a virus and the flu which is a little bit more easier to find um something to cure i mean i don't know if that's the correct way to put it uh hiv and aids are not just a virus like they're they're it's more than that right so it takes more um but obviously i think it's it goes to funding and i don't know man but um i'm fully vaccinated i'm alive so i'll probably hear one of those commercials when i'm in 20 2050 if you've taken the coronavirus shot in 2020 uh you can submit this claim for <laughs> but uh nah i i appreciate you man um it, it's been great um and i hope we continue uh to just stay in contact and, and network man yeah definitely brother i appreciate you having me um thank you for having me on yeah i'll stay in contact with you um we're both in real estate, so we always gonna have something to talk about. So most definitely you know, like going on here. Um let me know what's going on there. And I, I plan to go to San Diego, so I don't know who knows. Maybe we'll cross paths, man. I gotta get out there and see what's yeah, yeah. like. The world is opening up. Just let me know. Um you gotta come to the Bay Area too, man. We're about six hours, seven hours, seven hours from San Diego, but it, you know, the Bay Area is obviously well known. So you gotta come out here too, but um Oh yeah, you listen to Lil B, man. So I know you might know <laughs> the bass guy, man. <laughs> oh man, yeah, yeah, Lil B. Um, we went to the same high school and shit together, same same neighborhood. But uh, let's we gotta see. talk about that man one day off camera. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, go cool. ahead and leave your social media for everyone. Oh yeah, y'all can follow me at, at Brother Derek Coaches on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook, Derek Alfred. But yeah, you hit me up on IG um, at brother Derek at brother Derek coaches and uh yeah, for sure. Well, thank you again and thank you for listening to the audience. I appreciate uh, you giving your time. Um, and yeah, you heard it here. This is the Misguided Podcast. We intend to guide you to a better future. Again, my name is Jawan. I'm sitting here with Derek Alford, uh, entrepreneur and business coach. Make sure you go follow him and make sure you like and subscribe to this channel and share because that is how we continue to grow. All right, guys.